Paul, the subject today, ketoacidosis, do people actually need to worry about ketoacidosis on a low-carb diet? Look, this is a question I get all the time, and it arises from a common misconception, even amongst medical professionals, that the state of nutritional ketosis and ketoacidosis are the same thing, and they're absolutely not. So probably we should start by talking about what exactly is nutritional ketosis. Mm -hmm. So as you know, when you go on a low carbohydrate diet, your insulin levels fall, and that allows your body to start burning fat. And one of the byproducts of that fat metabolism can be something called a ketone. And we can see that in the bloodstream. So if you have ketones circulating around in your bloodstream, that's what we call a state of nutritional ketosis. Now, if you get too many ketones in your bloodstream, and it's an order of magnitude more than the state of nutritional ketosis, that is what we call the state of ketoacidosis. And that simply reflects the fact that the ketones are now high enough to change the pH of your body, put it into a state of acidosis, and that can be life-threatening. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we don't see this in healthy people on a ketogenic diet. We see it on people who have no insulin. So type 1 diabetics, the most common way that they present to hospital is in ketoacidosis. And once their pancreas has finally failed and they can't produce any insulin, they enter this state. And there's one other group of people which we should actually be concerned about on a ketogenic diet, and they're on a diabetic medication called SGLT2 inhibitors. So for that reason, any patient on an SGLT2 inhibitor, I will stop that medication before I advise them to start a low carbohydrate or a ketogenic diet. But aside from that, there's really no need for concern about entering the state of ketoacidosis. And if I explain it as an order of magnitude difference, most people struggle to get their ketones between over one millimole a liter or perhaps three millimoles a liter. And even in patients who have done a seven day complete water fast, I will rarely see the ketones over five or maybe six. But medically, the ketones don't become a problem with respect to ketoacidosis until it goes over 10. And for most people, they're never going to go within QE of that level there. So the short answer is, for most people, it is not a realistic concern and medical professionals should not confuse the two. Paul, thank you so much for bringing clarity to that point and peace of mind to our viewers as well. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.